Hello viewers, if you've been keeping up with my videos, you'll know I've been playing with a 128x64 graphics LCD and a DSPIC 33F microcontroller. This parallel LCD is interfaced pin for pin through inverters. A microcontroller pin is used for every signal pin of the LCD module. The most immediate problem with that for the microcontroller of choice is all the signal pins on the LCD module and particularly the 8-bit data bus. I hinted in the last video that the time has come to try a shift register uh, to bit bang out the data bus values and to reduce the 8 port pins needed for the LCD bus down to just the serial and clock inputs for the shift register. I'm still using 5 parts of a hex inverter for the rest of the control pins to level shift. Now I suddenly have 11 spare I.O. pins. Anything black is not an I.O. pin to begin with and anything grey or white is a spare I.O. pin after the LCD is connected. It never occurred to me before I was playing with these LCDs that my telephone has a very nice colour display which might be compatible. And it looks like it's going to be a flat flex cable which I don't want to work with in my home projects. Yep, ugh, that's a shame. So starting on my new board, the idea here is that the LCD goes on top of a couple of chips to make some more space on the board for an SD card. I'm loving the look of that so far. Uh, the idea of leaving the LCD disconnected is so that at the very end I can uh, just test it by touching the contacts. But a sneak preview, that never worked. Uh, the whole thing worked first time and uh, I never got the LCD to work this way. I uh, just never got all the pins to connect by holding them. Although this video is about the displays, uh, this board will become something else and no doubt there will be videos about that in future. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's an SD card. I had to split one of the pads because there's a pitch change right at the end. Um, but it does work. It's two separate contacts. And software. With the LCD connected parallel, to send a byte to the frame buffer, everything from the red bar and below was sent. For the serial version, the red bar line is commented and everything else you see on the screen is sent. The yellow bar is an extra function that didn't have to be dealt with before. In fairness, the serial version is so far a little retarded by setting the individual port pins. I could probably apply an XOR mask and write to the whole port with that as well. And the extra two functions to send a byte to the shift register. The shift bit function is called by the shift byte function. If you've noticed the audio change through this video, I've come to a national park to record the narration. Since the project was to have two boards anyway, I've put the power supply on the bottom board and then used a header connector to supply power to the top board. And side by side, at this stage it's completed just without the LCD on top. It looks like I'll be doing a lot of programming for this chip, so I've made a new carrier board with a ZIF socket for a lack of in-circuit serial programming interface. A new supply cable to run off an SLA battery, probably didn't need a ferrite for that, and a double adapter to power them both at the same time for a demo. Why can I use a 74164 shift register without any latch pin? Because the LCD enable pin is being the latch pin. A bunch of invalid values are presented to the LCD bus as you're shifting the value in, but they're all ignored until you finally set the enable pin low, at which time the value is latched into the LCD microcontroller. And the unit finally completed, at least to this stage with the displays connected and both able to run the demo. The second project that I'm doing now is meant to be something else of course, and as I mentioned before that's probably for another video. Here's the camera jig I'm using to record the showdown, and I'll elevate the lower board slightly so they're both flush. And here they are both being powered on simultaneously running the same demo, uh, they both have some garbage in the LCD buffer, which is what that was. Uh, once they start running, it doesn't take long for the parallel board to get ahead. Throughout the rest of this video, you can see that the boards are synchronised uh, by the LEDs that are running off a timer, flashing together. The sign scroller demos are painfully slow, but the good thing is most of these demo sections have deliberate delays between frames, so they can be sped up.
the Fast Plasma Xord sign scroller as it was supposed to be shown in the original demo but I hadn't quite got working properly yet. And this is as fast as I can do the Michi footprint demo on the serial display at the moment. It probably will get faster and the not so fast plasma. <laughs> And the parallel board coming to the end of its demo now, while the serial one's still a fair few sections behind. Unless I was actually trying to write fast screen demos or perhaps a game, I don't see the need to connect the LCD parallel again unless I had a microcontroller with an excess of I.O. pins. <laughs> 